Well, I knew this movie was coming, and it was one of those kind of things you didn't want to believe it until you saw it. So there's nothing really on my main radar until last night while trying to clear my mind of some other things. So like, hey, let's peruse around on the YouTuber and see what's going on there. And I come across this trailer, and it's, I never sat and watched it, and it's just the funniest damn thing I have seen. I knew they were going to make it. And like I said, can't believe it until I see it. Well, I saw it and I still can't believe it. Wow. Why? It, mm, it's supposed to be the third one to finish off this Jurassic era, as they say in the trailer. And hopefully it will be. So let's share in this laugh riot together. And uh, let's go through this trailer and pick a little couple things apart. Here is... <laughs> Our trailer starts off with a nice vast shot of the wide open range. Yeah, it kind of symbolizes what Universal is doing here to give you a whole big scope of nothing. $165 million, really? I mean, come on. Anyway, we get a stampeding herd of dinosaurs running through this area, and they're followed closely by several men on horseback. Hmm, guess these guys are trying to wrangle. Oh, look, it's Chris. He's back. Of course, he's back. But he seems to wrangle one of these dinosaurs, and well, I guess this fucker is just a dinosaur whisperer now at this point. Yeah, sure. Then we fade to a shot of, well, a shot that tend to have a lot of through this whole movie series is the people standing back and watching dinosaur walk by. Haven't used that enough yet, have we? Let's use it one more time. And oh! Look, it's it's little clone girl. Oh, probably the whole reason this movie exists, you know, because you like to push shiny red buttons because there's like me they're alive. Ah, fuck you. You should have been eaten a long time ago by that velociraptor on the roof. Move to a shot of a raptor running through. Oh, it's blue and oh, look, it's a little blue and they're on the run somewhere. Ah, who knows where they're going? Oh, probably coming here where... Oh, don't tell me Chris Pratt is taking custody of this little freak show. This uh, You should be dead. But Blue approaches and he uses his patented raptor Jedi mind trick on him. And eh, hopefully they reconcile and make amends and remember each other. Oh, happy times. Now, during these past few scenes of these opening shots, there's a um, familiar voice doing a monologue in the background. Of course, it's one Mr. John Hammond, and he says, and I quote, <clears throat> I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. Yeah, I guess I guess it wasn't an illusion because you, you, you created dinosaurs. So, yeah, okay, well, what the fuck ever. <clears throat> something that was real. Well, it depends on how you want to define real. Um, yeah, they were genetic freak experiments, but I guess you could call them real at the being the same in an instant that they're fake, that they're clones. So it's like, what is real? Uh, something they could see and touch. <sighs> you know, I only remember one instance of a petting zoo. That was in the first Jurassic World. And I guess Ellie touching the uh, big brontosaurus whatever it was and uh, i guess sadler touching the uh, triceratops when it was you know, sick before you know she stuck her hand in a big pile of shit but uh for the most part it seemed like in the first part there wasn't really room for a petting zoo something for them to touch but i digress creation is an act of sheer will of sheer will sheer will when you use that will of sureness to go out of your way to create life, to play God? Okay, fuck you, Hammond. Life will find a way. Yeah, I remember, and I remember specifically somebody saying that to you. Oh, could his name have been, hmm, I don't know, tip of my tongue, it kind of escapes me right now. Next, we get a shot of Chris Pratt, and it seems like he's talking to Dallas Bryce Howard, um, probably about finding Blue, and Dallas says, we can't keep her here forever, and Chris responds, if they find her, we're never gonna see her again. 
We gotta protect her. That's our job. That's your job? I'm sorry. What the fuck did you just say? Nah, it's not your job. It's your job to fucking do the right thing, preserve the sanctity of people's lives who are innocent because of this freak show experiment. That's your job. How much is this job you speak of paying? Whatever. We get another shot of blue and kid and another shot of baby blue screeching at something with a freak show Dallas and Chris and cameo by a Jeep Wrangler. Oh, the loving two again. Oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then we move to the sea where we see Watersaurus attacking a fishing vessel. These are just hardworking people trying to earn a living. Oh, this damn thing is just an asshole. How come all the other times you've been a hero, now you choose to be a dick? Move to a shot of the T-Rex. You know who the motherfucking T-Rex is. Looks like at a drive-in theater. You can find this on the internet. There's the opening prologue to this movie to where this particular dinosaur is being chased by the fish and wildlife surface. So it seems they know what they're dealing with. They know that dinosaurs are on the loose, but yet there's no kind of warning system to let these people know, hey, time to get the fuck out of the area. And something else that stands out to me is the snow, then no snow between shots that seem to be in the same location. This, what we call in the movie industry, is called passage of time. Then coming through a cavernous area, looking like uh, some people playing around in the dirt, uh, probably an archaeological dig, and we get good old Laura Dern inside uh, seems to be makeshift camp and she runs into good old Sam Neill and for the audience they say each other's names just in case you don't know who these people are you know some of you people weren't born when these movies came out the original ones she's obviously up to something because you know he has of course she didn't come all the way out here just to say hello and catch up and you know she asked him eh, you coming or not and he just gives the best face of oh yeah i'm gonna get another shot at hitting that so you know he's on board another shot of the vast emptiness that universal has brought us at the stunning rate of 165 million dollars with dinosaurs running next to horses yeah they're, they're, they're both dinosaurs that's kind of cool then we get the weird furry looking thing poking its head through the forest uh, it looks like he's chasing somebody off in the distance there wait a minute fuzzy hmm I wonder where this come back later. Ah, looks like he's chasing Dallas as she's crawling through this swampy looking area and got Chris here and Black Lady also in the fray. I mean, seriously, uh, I can't find a character name for her, so they, they, the only closest thing I found is her is called Actress, so we'll just call her Black Lady. But for the sake of shit, how cool would it be if this character was actually Ian Malcolm's daughter from Lost World. Eh? Eh? Why not? We're bringing back everybody else. Why the fuck not? And Dino seems to stick his head near the water like, ah, he's a little thirsty. He's all parched out and he's just quench his thirst just a tad bit. But wait a minute, what's that underneath the water? Like, oh, it's Dallas. Huh. I guess that's a good hiding spot, depending on how long you can hold your breath, and if that dinosaur just decides it doesn't want to take a drink of water and accidentally, n accidentally, wow, I really said that, accidentally, nip you in the top of the head because you're right fucking there, but, huh, I guess plot armor will save you, sure thing, why not? And speaking of Mr. Ah, ah, ah himself, we cut to our shot of first look at Jeff Goldblum, who is spouting dialogue of, ah, ah, we not only uh, lack dominion over uh, uh, nature, uh, uh, we're uh, subordinate to it. Uh, 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 yes, yes. Uh, uh, uh. Lack dominion over nature. This is not natural. There's nothing natural about any of this. Nice shot of somebody playing with some DNA sequencing on a computer. Not sure what's going on here. I guess it's in a lab. And a, oh, Mr. B.D. Wong is back to play. We don't know where your alliance stands. That's where this guy seems like he's gotten more and more evil over this film series. But he is the glue that kind of holds everything together. Not necessarily in a positive way, but he's our glue. How about a little action? We get Dallas running away from a raptor and 
on a rooftop, which looks like somewhere kind of European, seems like, from the uh, architecture. And she takes a leap of faith off her roof, and Raptor says, hey, I can do that too. Parkour! Cut to a wide shot of a facility looking nestled in a mountain valley side sort of looking. Looks like it's very high tech, it's bad, no expense. And this, I can only assume, is where our new dinosaurs are being made. We get Sam Neill in a helicopter looking down possibly at this facility, just in complete bewilderment. Just can't believe his eyes. And I was like, you know what? I can't believe my eyes either. I watched this trailer for this damn long. And oh, get some footsteps walking on us. Oh, here's a bird and a dinosaur and a... Wait, wait, what's going on here? This, this thing is... Are they about to do the... Oh my... <laughs> Okay, okay, so yes, there is the uh, theory, and uh, I guess based on science, yeah, there's the concept that thinking that uh, dinosaurs may have had feathers, you know, to be more like birds, but I did not actually think they would do this in this damn movie. Let's pull out all the stops. Spared, no expense. So, looks like Feathersaurus was approaching Chris and Black Lady, and... Interesting choice of weapons to go against a dinosaur with. Uh, she's got a taser, a Bowie taser. A, a, I don't know what's going on with that thing. And he's got a knife that looks like it's glowing like the dark saber from Mandalorian. But sure, can't wait to see how this fight goes on. Seeing how this fucker is rushing right at him. I wonder if he can fly. Move to a scene of Saddler taking her glasses off oh we haven't seen this one before not at all nostalgia just to pay a little reminiscence and guessing she's looking at this to two children running away from a swarm of whatever the hell they are i don't know we've gone into alfred hitchcock territory now with the boys cut to dallas talking to chris about I don't know, whatever the hell they're talking about, but she asks him to come back, and he says, I always come back. Okay, yeah, sure, why not? Moving on. And, of course, it can't be a Jurassic World movie without Chris Pratt getting on a motorcycle. Yeah, 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 okay, so he's Tom Cruise now. But what I find more interesting is the boat in the background. Seems like the name of the boat is Talus. Now, Talus, known in Greek mythology, was a, a giant automation made of bronze to protect Europa and Crete from pirates and invaders and this kind of feels fitting seeing as Chris Pratt's character I could see how he would be seeing something like that as he is the dinosaur whisperer now in these movies and it feels the duty to protect everybody and there's also in the mythology that Talos circled the island's shores three times daily so would seem fitting for it to be on a boat. Kind of a nice nod, nice touch movie, nice touch. So naturally a chase ensues to where he's riding away from, I guess a raptor, and it's going through the streets of this European, maybe even Greekish looking city. But why spend all this time running? Aren't you the dinosaur whisperer? Ah well, Chris Pratt on a motorcycle. Cut to a warning signal coming from a, uh, looks like an airplane cockpit. And oh, it is a cockpit. And we have Chris and Dallas and Black Lady looking up. A shadow looms over them and Chris asks Black Lady, that's another plane, right? Yes, it's another plane. After hearing a distinct roar, yeah, because that's what planes sound like. Maybe this will help you out. The claws that come through the windshield of the plane and oh, giant fuck you source on top of the plane. Well, all things seem kind of looming now and nice overhead shot of this fucker taking out both engines, so... They're dead, right? Open cockpit that we see Dallas sitting in. Yeah, they're they're dead, right? 
a shot of headlights, somebody traveling through some area, and we get Triceratops look like, and they attack this vehicle, so more interaction, more dinosaurs, another shot of baby blue car approaching, whatever's going on there. We get little miss fuck everything up, hiding in a cage, being attacked. God, I hope she dies. Cut to Dallas and Laura in some kind of control room. Maybe they're in that facility that Sam Neill was looking at from the helicopter. And then to an interesting shot of we have both main male protagonists from the series, Chris and Sam together in arms and a little misuseless in the background. Yeah, I guess that, you know, I guess it's common to bring children to a war zone, right? Take children to a war zone, right? Right? Dallas has a face-to-face -face interaction with a dinosaur. Oh, he's a scary looking one. It's the, oh, it's the Spinosaurus. Nice to see you back in action there, sir. Uh, do we see any wires in the shot this time, like from part one? Hmm? And of course, we can't end it without the group shot of everyone in the picture. Jeff, Sam, Laura, Dallas, Chris, Black Lady, and Little Miss Useless. But with this comes a nice comedic moment of both Sam and Chris saying, don't move. Yeah. Let's try that good old classic move. I mean, it worked one time, but what are they looking at? Oh, here he comes through the shadows. It's, it's the motherfucking T-Rex. And if I remember correctly, uh, wasn't light kind of an issue, especially in the form of beams? Maybe he caught them off guard, even though he was shaking water from three miles away. Um, maybe we turn his headlights off. A shot of the T-Rex skeleton behind a orangish, amberish light. I guess symbolism of the amber that their DNA is found in, and we cut. So to say on a whole, it's definitely looking uh, like they're not following that formula to replicate the, you know, Park 1 to World 1, Park 2 to World 2. Uh, but there's that going trend they have, because near that end scene, at least of the trailer, there's a question asked by... Ox by... There's a question asked by Malcolm about why do they always go bigger? And that makes a lot of sense. Why do they go bigger? We don't see these dinosaurs in a park setting. Why do they go bigger? We see that they do go out of their way to manipulate the DNA of these damn dinosaurs. They can write the fucking code all on their own. They went through the trouble of trying to make them all female. Why not? Follow me on this one. Why not genetically engineer them to not be able to reproduce? We got blue baby blue. Why give them the capability of reproduction? Why do these people continue to allow these things to fucking exist? Our good friend, Mr. Aussie guy, he had it right in the first movie where he said, ah, we just need to wipe them all out. And he was absolutely correct. The only person in five movies who said the smartest fucking thing. May he rest in peace. But to get back to the note of how this one is, well, for what it's worth, thankfully going to look different than a copy of the third Jurassic Park movie as the other two predecessors were to their after. What do we got? Part one, we have man of older age builds a dino park. He brings in people to the park to, you know, check it out let's not forget about our kid element gotta have some kids in here too naturally shit is hitting the fucking fan faster than a goddamn raccoon running across the fucking road in the middle of the night in backwood alabama get your t-rex roaring roar 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 t-rex likes to roar and they get the fuck out of dodge 
part two of both of these series. We have Shady Character, who is connected to the old man who's pretty much running the show. We go to get dinosaurs for an ill-gotten purpose, but, you know, under false pretenses. Our dinosaurs manage to find their way into the city. We get a young girl who is related to a main character. Once again, T-Rex roars. Oh, but wait, they're not out of the clear yet. Still got some more work to do. And we also get Malcolm appealing to a higher power to end these goddamn abominations. So, what are we really looking forward to here? Um, it looks like a different path than we're gonna get in... Don't even, you can't even call it Jurassic World 3. It's called Domin Dominion... Domin 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 Domination? Domin whatever the fuck it's called. Dominion... Instead of calling it Jurassic Park 3 or Jurassic World 3, it's like, ah, what the fuck ever. Okay, move off of that forum. But why would you call Jurassic Park 2, call it The Lost World? There's no 2 in it. Yet, the Jurassic World series seems to fall under, you know, Jurassic World, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic World Dominion. It's, okay, whatever. Fuck name in the goddamn movies. Um, This looks like absolute shit. And I cannot wait to laugh my ass off watching this fucking bullshit. This is going to be a laugh right. I had so much fucking fun watching this damn trailer. Oh my god. I didn't want to... I, 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 I didn't know how to approach this, but it, I'm glad I did. Fucking had to put my Matrix video. It's coming. I hear y'all. I've heard y'all that, that, that the Matrix Resurrections trailer. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. The movie's coming. The movie, it's coming. It's coming. But this one, I had to get out. It's just, it was too hard to resist. So let's see what happens in this movie. Well, hell, well, I mean, I think we got a pretty good idea what's going to happen with this movie. Absolute horse shit. All right. Colin Trevorrow is directing this. The man who was kicked off of The Rise of Skywalker. You know, the movie that some tout as the greatest Star Wars movie ever made. No comment there. No comment there. Uh, <laughs> this fucker was directing The Lost World. And that seems about right for them to bring him into Star Wars to where we want to do a nice, soft, safe reboot. Let's take the original elements and sprinkle a little bit on to call it something new. Sure, why the fuck not? Hey, sir, what ideas do you have that got you kicked off of the greatest Star Wars movie ever made? Um, I don't know. Let's get the band back together and have feathery dinosaur sure why not sounds great sounds fucking great so if we run the math to do an equivalent of that being the best star wars movie then this is on track to be the greatest jurassic park movie ever made yeah sure this is this is gonna be the one this is the one jurassic world dominion jurassic world dominion. it's gonna be great it's gonna be great it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be the best Fucking Jurassic World movie ever. Fucking fuck. Mm -hmm.